Before you go ahead and cut a bloody path in Japan, let's talk about games that could give you a similar vibe. So, what up everybody, I'm your host Mike Fury, welcome to the channel, and I make videos to inform and entertain, so please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content, and these are 5 games to play before Ghost of Tsushima. Before we go ahead and get into the list, let's talk about our honorable mention for today, it is Neo. Neo is a way too obvious choice. He is a samurai. He it also happens to be in Japan, and it's an RPG as well. Way too obvious, so it's not going to be on our list, but it does make it as an honorable mention. So with that being said, guys, fuego. At number five, we have For Honor. Now, For Honor is this very cool melee action game where you get to pick up the weapons of the Forgotten Ages. So basically, you're gonna get to play as knights, vikings, and of course, samurai. Now, if you're gonna go for a complete Ghost of Tsushima build, I advise you to go with one of these two. Either go with Orochi, who happens to be the fast, nimble one, who does quick strikes and is very easy to dodge and kind of just looks like the main character from Ghost of Tsushima when he has his mask on, or go with Kenshi, who happens to carry the big, long samurai sword, and it's just awesome. The movements are great, the way that they move, the way that they communicate, and then the executions are by far the best part of the game. So definitely check out For Honor if you want to play as a samurai, and it could be found dirt cheap and sometimes completely free. At number 4, we have Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Assassin's Creed Origins, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Reason being, I couldn't pick one. I don't know which one happens to play more like a ninja than the other. And Ghost of Tsushima itself has some very familiar traits like an Assassin's Creed. The open world, the shiny part, the shiny materials that you can find, the crafting that more or less that you can do in the game, the horseback riding kind of similar to an Odyssey. So it's very it's very difficult. I think Assassin's Creed 2 plays mo the closest to a ninja would, obviously in the shadows like if you were ghosts, but then the action, action-y kind of combat would be closer to maybe an Origins or an Odyssey. And then finally, if you want to go with Black Flag, Black Flag arguably, arguably being the best one and probably has the best open world, uh, debatable with Odyssey because obviously uh, Greece is massive and a joy to explore. It all depends on what you're feeling now. You pick a setting, if you want Old Italy, we can go to Assassin's Creed 2. If you want Greece, go to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Egypt being Origins, and finally, the last one being Black Flag, which would be the Galapagos Islands, I think it is. I really don't know. I, I, you know what? It's the sea. Whatever. <laughs> At number three, we have Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun. It is a stealth-oriented, real-time tactics game inspired by Desperados and Commandos, and this game is deep let's just talk about it just this is just the surface you command a small team and perform various actions of well various actions of course while you're playing the game but various acts of espionage sabotage assassination such as infiltrating heavy guarded fortresses eliminating the enemies within said fortress killing and capturing special targets stealing important documents overhearing conversation it's everything you want in a game that allows you to either play like a samurai or play like a ninja. It's stealth oriented, but that doesn't mean you can't get your hands dirty and do all types of buffoonery and play the game in, in the way that you want to. But it is an awesome game and I do recommend it if you want to get that Japanese ninja samurai vibe. At number two, we have Onimusha Warlords. Now this was a remastered from a game that came from PS2, GameCube, Xbox era, and it is a great game. Do keep in mind, I believe that the second one and the third one are far superior, but this is a very solid samurai-like action role-playing game. And it's light on the RPG elements, but I do believe that it's more its more of an action game nonetheless. You can collect souls, you can decapitate enemies, you can do all types of awesome samurai 
goodness. And then not only that, you also get different weapons that carry different elements and different powers. And there's a small world in Japan. Well, not a small world. It's not like it's an open world, but it's more like these set levels that you get to progress through. And it's kind of little linear because it's like direct paths, but there's also puzzle solving and there's tons of content there for you to explore and engross yourself in this Japanese folktale. And I think it's by far one of my favorite games from that era. It is so so good i'm glad that they remastered it but i think it fell by the wayside because it was released along some other very big games and you know people kind of forgot about it so definitely check out onimusha warlord whenever you guys get the chance and finally our number one metal gear solid 5 phantom pain the quintessential stealth game now of course this being the best game possibly in this list, it all depends on what your particular flavor is. This by far for me, it is the best game in the list of games that I just mentioned. It is great. The story, even though it's a little too complex and you might be a little lost from the events, it actually sits chronologically as the second game in the series. It has a boatload of content and things for you to do it has some online features as well that you could take advantage of but it's that world that open world where you get to gather materials gather soldier soldiers gather money and funds and just like do all types of crazy missions fight awesome boss battles and just have a great time at the mastery of Hideo Kojima because he really is a master at what he does this game is phenomenal and the crazy part is that there was still some parts of the game missing. So if I were you guys, I would find the, dev, the the definitive edition that gives you ground zeros and the game. You can find it dirt cheap. And it's mainly that why it lands on number one. You can find it for four or five dollars on the PSN or on PC, like anywhere, anywhere at all. And it is just a great buy because you're getting more than a hundred plus hours of gameplay if you truly want it to last that long. So anyways, guys, Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe with the like button, comment down below. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Let me know, give me some feedback. Let me know how I can change up the format or give you guys more information or what exactly would you guys like for me to check out? Give me some options down in the comment section down below. And as always, I am your host, Mike Fury. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Links are down in the description below. Until next time, it's been my pleasure, you guys. And I'm having a great week. Yo, that last Man Eater video, if you guys want, you can go check it out. It's been doing great. It's also down in the link down in the description. Uh, I, can't, I really can't say the amount of support I've gotten for that video is phenomenal. Until next time, everybody, Mike off.